Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to more Magic Arena. Today we have the Friday Night Magic at Home event of the week. It is another Omniscience event, although they have changed things up quite a bit this time around with how they've built the decks, as well as the special rules of only being able to cast one spell per turn, and everyone starting at 10 life. So Omniscience formats, for those who don't know, means everything you're casting is completely for free. You don't have to worry about the mana cost on any of your cards, and the costs on any of their abilities. You do get 5 mana per turn to use those on abilities. But, um, yeah, so the Omniscience formats are pretty insane. Usually you just play a bunch of draw spells, loop together really big plays in one turn, but the Rule of Law stops you from doing that, and the specific decks that they've built here kind of don't have the most insane, really ridiculous plays that often. Um, this format is very, very heavily built around trying to get, like, more creatures out than your opponents. There's a lot of, like, creature token stuff in these decks, but of course they're also 140 cards, so that could have just been what I've seen out of the decks so far. Um, you know, you're never going to see the, the whole thing in your games, but, like, there's cards like Raid Bombardment when... Your tiny creatures attack, you're doing extra damage to your opponent. There's cards like Dramatic Finale that buff all your creature tokens, and there are tons and tons and tons of creature tokens. Banalish Marshal as well, buffing your whole field. But yeah, you have cards like Aviation Pioneer, a 1-2 that comes with a 1-1 token. You have Haunted of Life's Webs that just sits there making creature tokens. You've got Raise the Alarm that makes two creature tokens. So this format is very, very heavily about just making your field wider than your opponent, especially because each player only starts at 10 life. So with your opponent being at 10 life, if you have 12 creatures and they have two, you can just go wide and, and kill them. But you also have to think a lot about the math of when you have seven creatures and they have three. If those creatures are bigger than your seven, like you have seven one ones, they have three two twos, is it still worth the attack? Because you can attack in with everybody, deal four to them, put them down to six. That's pretty big, even though you're losing three creatures to do it. So there's a lot of interesting decisions and stuff like that there. And of course, there are some instants um, to affect that math a lot. Um, but it is a pretty random format, as always. Um, with these Omniscience formats, so definitely don't feel bad if you're just getting a massive loss streak in it. Um, it's it's super random, super chaotic as always, but uh, yeah, that's, that's generally how the format works. Because you can only cast one spell per turn, the strongest hands, the strongest draws are going to be the ones with multiple sorcery speed effects and instant speed effects. You're almost always going to win a game in which you actually get to do things at instant speed, and your opponent doesn't because you're just going to do so many more things than them if they only get to spend, um, if they only get to play one of their cards every turn versus you playing two because you're playing one in your turn and one in their turn, you're just doing a lot more stuff than them. So that is uh, that is pretty good. I think Haunted of Seeing wins is pretty interesting to me here, being able to draw an extra card every turn. But the power level of our stuff is pretty small here, so I don't know for sure about this hand. Of course, cycling effects are not casting a spell, so we can do that. Um, without even doing anything else. Although, 6 life's pretty big when everybody starts at only 10, so we might even want to cast Renewed Faith. Don't know about that. We still gain 2 life when we cycle it, and we draw a card, so probably just going to go for the cycle here and do it in the main phase in case I draw something better to play on turn 1. So, because cycling is an ability again, we can do that and still do other stuff. I'm just going to play the Hond in here. We can start drawing additional cards every turn. No more instants to play here. So we won't be doing anything during their turn. Deliberate. That was probably their draw off the top, because if they had that in hand, they probably would have just done it during our turn. So nothing super great in their hand for this situation, it seems. Maybe just some creature removal. And we haven't played any creatures yet. So they're going to scry two and draw one, see what they get there. And it is our upkeep now. They have... Okay. Well, they're going to scoop them up there. Fair enough. Fair enough. You are going to see definitely plays like that as well. Because this is a format that's completely for free, completely for fun. But you also do get a rare for your first and second wins. So there are going to be people who don't really enjoy the format at all that are just hopping in to try to get their wins. So if anything goes wrong in the game, they'll just scoop them up real fast because um, all they're trying to do is just get the wins as fast as possible. So 
maybe they had to liberate in their opener and they were trying to cast it during our turn but accidentally skipped through or something and then they realized when it went to our upkeep when they passed turn that would be the best explanation or maybe they just had to go do something but i will go ahead and play until i hit three wins then i won't really count that one uh, as part of today's video there all right well, nothing instant speed's really not great. Just removal here, although killing something and gaining three life, pretty good again when you're only at 10 life. Um, but I'm gonna take the free mulligan here. I don't think an instantless hand is worth it. You see this hand's super good. We got multiple different things we can do during our opponent's turn and they're going first here. So if they play a really good creature, we doom blade it. If they don't, we just pop quiz, learn lesson and draw a card. This is really good because we have those instant speed plays. They're going to do nothing turn one. Interesting. I'll go for a pop quiz here. In their end step, we draw an aggressive urge. Another instant speed card, so that's pretty cool. Um, probably going to cast a Splendor Mare here, get a 3-3 a three, three lifelink. Um, so I don't know what, what lesson we want the most here. I guess we don't have any more creatures, so grabbing a creature lesson seems solid. You just grab a flyer. There are a lot of tokens in the format, most of which are small grounded creatures like 1-1 one, one pests and 1-1 one, one soldiers and goblins and all that. Why do I have mana right now? I didn't mean to use the uh, the ability there. Oh, I, I accidentally hard cast the Splendor Mare. I used the ability to pay 3 and cast it instead of casting it for free. Alright, so this hand's really good because if they don't play something we want to Doomblade here, we can just aggressive urge to draw a card. Because we'd rather just cycle this to draw a card than get one extra damage out of it. If it goes to our turn, we're not going to play an aggressive urge in our main phase. We'd rather just play an inkling summoning and get more creatures onto the board. Can't save Splendor Mare by aggressive urging, but we can still cycle the aggressive urge to draw another card. And I think I'll go ahead and do that. Just cycle that, draw something maybe better here. I can play a 2-1, or I can just draw two cards. I do lose two life when I do that, which isn't awesome. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. We could take a pretty firm control of this game with these instant speed removal spells. So I'm just drawing some more cards, getting more instant speed removal spells. So we are, always have our opponent's stuff under control here. Seems pretty good. Dramatic Finale is cool, but we don't have any non-token creatures right now. So we're not going to get any value off of the when non-token creatures die ability happens. So I'm not going to be casting that. I'm probably going to be casting Inkling Summoning first. I suppose if they don't do anything to our Inkling, we could cast Dramatic Finale the next turn because we have nothing else to do. Sorcery speed, it's all very interactive, just trying to counteract whatever they're doing. But they must have a similar hand if they're just consistently casting nothing there. So Jaya's Greeting is the play. Going to go ahead and kill the Inkling and scry one. And Ambassador Oak here. Just go for a Storm's Wrath, or do I want to kill that? I do get to scry one with Skywhaler's Shot. I have enough cards here I could also kill both um, without going down to less cards than them. Yeah, I'd rather save Storm's Wrath for something potentially scarier. Prismari Apprentice is pretty cool here. It's bigger than a 1-1, one, one, so I'll keep it and cast that for the turn. If something goes heinously wrong and we need to kill the 1-1, one, one, we have ways to do that, but we can leave it on the board as long as we have a creature that's bigger than it, like a 2-2. Two, two. We don't have any spells with mana value 5 or greater, so we're not really doing much with the Apprentice's ability, although we can still make it unblockable um, sometimes. So four cards in our opponent's hand here. If they have more ways to kill things, we'll just expect they kill the apprentice here. Pride Malkin. Put plus one plus one counter on something when it comes into play. Probably put it on itself. I think Heartless Act is actually going to kill more things than Doomblade would, so I'm going to use Doomblade first, because they might actually have a black creature at some point. I wouldn't really expect a ton of creatures with plus one, plus one counters. So, 
Uh, I'll just do the Doom Blade here. Of course, Prismari Apprentice, or Prismari Apprentice, the Pride Malkin is a creature with counters. Um, so that would maybe be an argument for there being a lot of creatures with counters in the format, but Pride Malkin's kind of the first one I've seen here. Sinister Sabotage to counter the dramatic finale. All right. Was doing that pre-combat there in case they had giant growth or something and they were going to block and kill our apprentice. So Sinister Sabotage, they leave their card on top. So they like whatever it is. Definitely scary. Cram Session is the play game. Four life and learn. For life, actually a pretty big number in this format. All the damage being a lot of just onesie, twosies. Really small amounts. And they learn for a pest summoning. Could definitely see a Storm's Wrath coming up here. Divide by zero is the draw. Really nice card there. But, cannot bounce tokens with it. But because you can only cast one spell per turn, casting a Divide by Zero does pretty much stop their whole turn. Um, we don't have anything that's worth casting right now. Pass Summoning. I could let it happen and then Storm's Wrath. I could also just hold him off a turn and get more damage out of Apprentice. That's fine by me because that gives me a guaranteed thing I want to play in my main phase. Just some sorcery here. Expanded Anatomy actually really good because unblockable 4-4 Prismari Apprentice would be a lot of damage. Yeah, then I don't even have to Storm's Wrath because I can just keep giving Prismari Apprentice unblockable once it has 4 power. That's a really big game. Of course, if they just have a targeted removal spell, this won't be so good. But if they don't, really puts a big clock on them here, dealing four damage a turn. Even if they make those pass tokens, we can give the Apprentice unblockable. Put them down to two here. Yeah, so they are going to go ahead and try to pigment storm it. Do we have anything to save it? We don't. Defend the campus could give it plus one, plus one. But that would still just be a five, five. If Defend the Campus cost 5 mana, the Apprentice would get a counter and it would live, but it does not, so we're going to let that happen. Yeah, nothing we can do. And again, I don't really want to use one targeted removal spell on the 1-1. One -one. If they go for the Pest Summoning next turn, we'll go ahead and just Storm's Wrath kill them all. Just hold on to all this here. We've got time. Got time to just take that damage. Ooh, flying haste. Retriever Phoenix. If I Heartless Act it, they can use its own learn ability to bring it back from the grave to the hand, which is actually a pretty interesting interaction this card can do. So I'd rather they not do that. I'd rather just let them have whatever uh, mediocre lesson they pick up. None of the lessons are like super insane in this format. Just generally on par with whatever they're going to draw if not a bit weaker. So I'll let them grab whatever they want. Yeah, just a three mana, three, two. Well, a zero mana, three, two, because this is uh, Omniscience. But, uh, certainly nothing crazy. Of course, their next learn card is gonna bring that Phoenix back from the grave, which is a big deal. So if they draw any more stuff with learn, and there's a decent amount, they now have something really productive to do with those cards. Rock Slide Sorcerer is the play. When they cast an instant Sorcerer or Wizard, they deal one to any target. Okay. Can really chip away at us here since we're down to four. Kill the 1-1 one, one and the 3-3, three, three, or I could gain three life and kill the 3-3. Three, three. Do the gain three life thing. I'm still holding off for for that pest summoning here, but they're probably just going to keep playing one better creature than two 1-1s one -ones every turn. If they have drawn into a counter spell here, the game is over. Alright, no counter spells. So we do go up to 7 life. 
Arena Trickster is going to be a really nice blocker whenever we have the time to get that out. And it is starting to look like I should have just used one targeted removal spell on this little 1-1 one -one at some point. Because since you can only play the one spell per turn, it doesn't really matter that I have so many cards because I can only use one of them per turn. So I've just got to be actively using them when I can. Although now we do get the big Storm's Wrath off. That's definitely going to be the play here, I think. Although at 6 life, Arena Trickster's pretty good. Because they're probably not hasting anything out unless they get the, the Phoenix back. So we just play a Trickster and we can block one of their things, take two. Start whittling their board down that way. We can also make Trickster big enough to survive a Storm's Wrath really easily. We just cast Starlet Mantle on it during their turn. And it'll get plus one, plus one from that, plus plus one, plus one from its ability. Bit greedy here, but I'm going to try to get an Arena Trickster out. Could just have an instant speed removal spell and we go down to three if they do. Then we'll just Storm's Wrath next turn and be at a very dangerously low life total. Although there are, al there are also some cards that are big enough with haste in this format to just kill us. Like a Scampering Scorcher. It's four mana for... Well, zero mana for three one ones with haste. So if they instant speed kill the Arena Trickster and then Scampering Scorcher us, we'd be dead. And I am sure there are other cards in the format that would do it as well. Raise the alarm. Whew. All they need to do to find lethal here is learn once, because that'll bring the Retriever Phoenix to the battlefield. And there's the learn card, so that'll just get us here. We don't have any way to uh, kill one of their creatures. Defend the campus, only kill something with power four or greater. So that is dead on the spot. I guess we gain two life. Gain two life off Appetite for the Unnatural. They've already played their card per turn. So we know that they don't uh, they don't cast anything else here. Um, so we take one, two, block that, take seven. Yeah, we go to actually one life. So we do survive here. Kill the elf, I guess. I should have killed that pre-combat. That was my bad there. Now we can rip apart the Retriever Phoenix, but we don't have any way to gain life here. We can Storm's Wrath, but Arena Trickster isn't big enough to survive anymore. Just Storm's Wrath go to one, our only way to survive here. Is here the Counterspell? Giant growth to save the Retriever Phoenix. That is going to be game there. I think there's definitely a lot of lines we could have done differently there. Now that I've played a little more of this format, I think you got to use that remove a little more aggressively. Just clear that 1-1 one, one out of the way a long time ago. Obviously also killing the um, Sparring Regimen to lower the damage we took that turn would have been ideal, but that wouldn't have really changed the outcome of the game at all because they still have giant growth to save it from Storm's Wrath, and we would have been at two life, and then it hits us for two. So, still would have been the better play, but that play didn't come into effect for us, but killing that 1-1 one, one a long time ago definitely would have. And, uh, yeah, the Arena Trickster might have been a little greedy. But, again, it is just a really weird format. None of the, uh... Not a lot of the ways that you play or the lines here are really, um great practice for any specific like competitive magic formats or anything so I wouldn't really uh, worry too hard about it yeah I guess I'll keep this we have that instant speed interaction we can just counter their whole turn with an unsubstantiate and winged procession is probably good in this format we've seen tons of tokens in every game so and there's plenty of turns, as we saw in that last game, where you don't really have anything you love doing. We can return a creature to hand with Unsubstantiate, so we can wait till that gets particularly big to bounce that. Or we could just cast Kervek, and if they don't have a way to get rid of Kervek, 
Karavek will kill that Quirion Dryad, and it looks like that works out. Really good draw for us. Karavek, spiteful. This card's really good in this format again, as we've seen with all those 1-1 one, one tokens, giving everything minus 1, minus 1 is massive. Charming Prince, well, let's just counter their turn, because they didn't have any instants last turn, so maybe they still don't have instants, and we get 3 damage in here, which could be awesome. Anointed Procession into Spore Swarm should be illegal in this format. That's absolutely absurd. However, Kervek would kill all of the tokens from the Spore Swarm, so we have to wait till Kervek dies to cast it. Kervek does kill your own creatures, so they do have the Thundering Rebuke to kill Kervek. That means Spore Swarm's active. They cast their one spell per turn, so we know they don't counter it. I am not going to play into a Wrath here. We had the Storm's Wrath last game, so we know that there are those kind of cards in the deck. As you can see, they did toss one down on us here. Night Squad Commando doesn't make a token unless we attacked, so I'll just play a Reclamation Sage choosing not to blow up our uh, Anointed Procession. I think we still gotta put the pressure on, get something out that can kill them if they don't play a blocker. Reclamation Sage of their own for our Anointed Procession means that we can wrap in flames for lethal if they don't have an instant here. And if they do, if it's just giant growth or something, we still shut off Reclamation Sage's ability to block. Still break in for lethal, so we'll see what they've drawn. Village Rite, sack it, draw two cards. Unfortunately, that is their one spell per turn. So that does mean they can't cast any instants that they've drawn there. So that was a really good lineup of draws for us in that game, and it was going to lead to a really quick victory there. So that is the two wins. Got gems each time. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest, even though it's not particularly exciting. I do like getting gems, so I can just keep playing draft and limited all of those special formats. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and hop back in. We'll grab a third win here, since the first round's win was just a concession from an opponent on turn two, so nothing really happened there. So, one final win we'll try to grab here. Everything here is sorcery speed, so I don't love it, but the fact that Talrun's Invocation makes two flying creatures is pretty good. So this might be a keepable hand, even though there's no instance. I'm still going to go for the mulligan, though. Having instance is just so, so good. I'm even going to mulligan to two, because I already got my two wins for the day, so whatever here. All right, we're going to keep the two. Get rid of the query and dryad. I feel like that's going to build up to be big way too slowly. There seems like there's a million removal spells in this format. All right, opponent with a great start. Renewed Faith, thanks to it being a cycling ability, does give you that life and draw a card. And lets you still play a spell that turn. So that is really good. I'm going to go with the Callous Blood Mage here, actually making the 1-1. One, one. So a curve into the Banalish Marshal next turn could be powerful. Although attacking with Amara here does give them a 1-1 one, one as well. Yeah, we try to make the trade on the Amara, but they might have Giant Growth or something. Feral Invocation for a permanent buff. It's a pretty good card for this format. I'm just going to kill Amara now. Um, I don't really want to cycle the Avian Oddity. Cycling it just gives one of my creatures flying, and giving a 1-1 one, one flying is not particularly exciting. Especially because I'm not going to want to try to attack them and race with a flying 1-1 one, one against a lifelinker, because the lifelinker is always going to win that race. Path of Bravery does give their whole field plus 1 plus 1, as long as their life total is higher than their starting total, which should be basically the whole time. Because they gain a life when they attack with a creature, as well as having a lifelinker out here. It's very, very good. So they will go to 15 here. And I'm not going to block because we wouldn't even trade there, but if I get Banalish Marshall out, we would. Pigment Storm is actually okay. Killing a lifelinker does seem good here. But I'm going to go for the Banalish Marshall, hope for the best. If they don't blow that up, I can trade my 2-2 into their 2-2. Which is what I'll try to do if they declare an attack here. Because if they declare an attack without killing Banalish Marshal pre-combat, there's no way I'm blocking with Banalish Marshal. Definitely could have just attacked there as well, because they're getting to a really high life total for this format. They have doubled their life at this point. 
So attacking there plays well if they aren't going to do another giant growth kind of uh, combat trick on the attack. Can give Banalish Marshall flying now. I'm going to be casting a Pigment Storm in my next turn, so it's a thing I could do, but I could do that at any point because they can always just cycle. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and kill that. So Life Linker now. Send in for all this damage. We'll keep the flying for when it might matter. Get that trick out of nowhere. Maybe find the last few damage we need. Spirit summoning is the play. Grabs a 4-3 thanks to Path of Bravery, but we're about to put them down to low enough where that won't matter with Crushing Disappointment. All right. Wow, Talran's Invocation, really good sorcery speed effect here. So I'm going to go for that, and we can cycle the Avian Audi to give the Marshal flying so it can attack past the 3-2 on the ground. We can attack with everybody, offer the trade with the 2-2. Two -two. If they don't take that trade, they take 5, so that's pretty awesome. And Vizier of Deferment's a pretty ridiculous card to be able to play at instant speed as well. You get to exile a creature that attacked or blocked and then bring it back to the battlefield. So if you use that on a token, you permanently kill it. So this is really good in this format with the amount of tokens there are. Of course, there's Mirror March here. That would be really fun to get out, but don't expect that I will. So I'm just going to be playing the Vizier to uh, get another attacker on this board. Maybe hit through for lethal. They're definitely planning on using a removal spell here if they're trying to survive. Alright, Jaya's Greeting kills the Banalish Marshal, so they do not die anymore. They take four in the sky. And they go to seven here, so they don't even have to block the Vizier. Ooh, Chandra's Pyrohelix will get to lethal here. Well, I guess it won't get to lethal. Because if we shoot Blood Artist for one and then shoot their face for one before blocks, Blood Artist's ability triggers, so they go to... They go to eight, go back down to seven, take six. That would have been not lethal. And this isn't lethal either because they actually go to three here, so we'd put them to one. Either way, we put them to one, so I'll just go for that. And then I could maybe hold on to this for next turn and just play the Mirror March right now. Or I guess not either way they go to one. We would have had him at one the other way around, but this way we get to kill Blood Artist and hold on to Pyro Helix, put him to two with Pyro Helix. So Salvager of Secrets, do they have an instant in their grave? They do, a Jaya's Greeting, or a Renewed Faith. We don't have a way to counter that, though. Renewed Faith might be the, the pick here. Yeah, because they can use it immediately, or they can just hold it to till their turn, or till our turn to gain six and go back up to ten. All right, I'm just going to kill that blocker right now since they've already cast their spell for turn. We know we hit in for six, but they gain six life, so they'll be at ten. Go back down to four here. If we draw a creature to mirror march with, that could always just get there. We'll see. Unfortunately, another instant for them. Snow Day, it's going to be tap those two down, draw two cards, and discard a card, and they're tapped for another turn. It's definitely really uh, wanting to draw any creature for Mirror March. See how well that works out. Wolfkin Bond. Not going to work with the Mirror March, but does get in a little more damage this turn and put another token on the board. They've already cast their spell per turn, so we know they can't kill the Vizier. They have to cycle the Renewed Faith to survive here, so they go to two. Because, again, they've cast their one spell per turn. Alright, they definitely need, like, a Storm's Wrath here. Oh, there's the Storm's Wrath. I feel like Storm's Wrath has shown up pretty much every game. Well, if we win one flip off the Serendipifreet, we'll have a Hasting Flyer that kills them. Alright, Adaptive Shimmerer, do we win one flip? Looks like we won several. Oh, yeah. Incredibly lethal there. 
with a ton of flying damage coming in. So that is going to end today's event and today's video. Don't have another rare to show you here. We already got, technically already had the two wins, but one of them was a freebie, so we'll go ahead and grab that third there. And that was the FNM at home omniscience event. What did you think of the format? Did you enjoy it? Do you hate it? There are definitely um, a lot of mixed feelings on this format. Personally, I don't think this was all that fun. Um, omniscience is, is fun now and then. Um, but my favorite way to play Omniscience is in the Omniscience drafts, where it's no holds barred, no rules. You just draft all of the card draw and then play really explosive big turns. This was interesting. They did something very different with it, bringing everyone down to 10 life and restricting things to one card per turn. It plays very, very different from a traditional Omniscience event, so at least there's that. It's definitely not just doing the exact same thing as uh, as always, but not super my my cup of tea. Some, some kind of weird, longer than I thought, somewhat uh, grindy games there, but still still heavily um, coin flippy with some, some pretty big explosive plays, so yeah, it was definitely an alright format. I'm, I'm not complaining. It was some free rares, as always, in the FNM at home events. So decent all around. Anyways, at the end of the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all of the good stuff that lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're enjoying the content and want to see more. If you want to see when I stream live on Twitch, I do stream live at the Twitch link in the description below every Sunday. I do a little draft recording session there. I don't stream every video that you see live, just a few of them like this video is just entirely pre-recorded. That is the one live stream scheduled per week. Um, but yeah, as always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.